know, in the words of a good friend, life is pretty fast these days, which is why it's so important to have a place to sit and just be. Hi, I'm Brad Staggs, and this is a very comfortable and sturdy garden bench. It's sturdy enough even for me. It's made from pressure-treated southern pine, so it'll be able to withstand just about anything Mother Nature can throw at it. It has some pretty cool detail work, too. Dovetail joints and wooden dowel fasteners give it a real handcrafted look. Elegant curves play nicely against the long, straight back and seat. And most important, it's surprisingly comfortable. What do you say we spend a little time in the workshop? I'll show you how to make it. One of the things I really like about this project is the fact that you can do it over a weekend. Uh, with just a couple of tricks, we can make even the curbs in this bench simple to do. Take a look. We'll start with the ends. They're each made up of two parts with a cleat fastening them together. Let's start with the larger of the two. To sketch out the longer of our two end boards, we're going to start at the bottom, measure up 10 and a half, 14, and 17 and a half inches. We're going to draw lines across the board at those points. Then measuring back from the front of the board, we're going to make a mark at nine and a half inches and then connect all these lines. Our next step is to set a series of finish nails in the board. These will mark the rough location of the curve along the back. Now this is just a scrap piece of wood about an eighth of an inch thick and about four feet long. It's a nice bender board which will give us just the right curve along the back edge of that end piece. It just feeds right through the nails like this. Now all I have to do is draw a line along that edge and we've got our curve all ready to cut. Here's the other simple trick. An old ruler. Just happened to have this laying around. Had one hole already drilled in it so you could hang it up. What I did was drill two more holes, one at two inches and one at five. What that'll allow us to do is create a nice arc pattern anytime we put a pin here and a marker in here. At the bottom front edge of our piece, we need to draw an arc. For that, we'll use the hole at the five inch mark on the ruler. The last curve we need to draw is along the front edge. To do this, we need one more finish nail on the top line closest to the front of the piece. Place the bender board against the nail and hold it in place at the top, aligning it with the center mark of the circle. Make sure you have a slight bend in the board by applying pressure against the nail, then draw a line along the outside edge. Once the pattern is completely drawn, secure the piece in a vise and use a jigsaw to cut it out. Hang on to this piece because we can use this as a pattern for the rest of our pieces. This is also a good time to sand any rough edges from the piece. To sand along the arc, use a spindle sander or a drum sander in a drill. All right, to make the smaller of our two end pieces, we're gonna use that scrap that we cut out of the larger piece to make our curve, just align it against the edges and draw around it. And then for that front edge, what I've done is measure in from the back nine and a half inches and then put a nail five and a half inches down from the top. And what that will allow us to do is put our bender board in here and give us a nice graceful curve up to that five and a half inch mark right there. So all we have to do is cut these pieces out and we've almost got a complete side. As with the long side, once the pattern is drawn, cut and sand the piece. Then we're ready for assembly. All right, to join our two pieces together, we're going to need to use a two by six cleat. Now to get the width of that cleat, we're gonna put our two pieces together and then we're gonna use that scrap piece of wood again to measure in from each outside edge. You may just make a little mark here and there. And then the distance between those two marks is gonna be the length of this cleat, which just happens to be right here. So we're gonna put this in place, align it against the top of the shorter piece right there and in between those two marks. And next I'll drill some pilot holes, put screws in, and this one side is just about complete.
Once the end is complete, use a roundover bit to soften the semicircle formed at the bottom. This will give the bench a real finished look. Now that our two ends are complete, they're tied together with a front and a rear apron. Now these aprons are just simple uh, two by sixes. They're 60 inches long and they're tied into the ends with a dovetail joint here and a couple of wooden dowels. Very simple to do. I'm gonna show you how to make that, uh, that dovetail joint and also a great tool that's gonna make this whole job a whole lot easier. We'll make the dovetail pins on each end of the two by six aprons by measuring back from the edge an inch and a half, the width of each side. Next, mark and draw a line one inch long at that point. At the edge of the two by six, measure up three quarters of an inch and connect that point with the line you just drew. We'll use an oscillating saw to cut the dovetails. The blade basically vibrates back and forth to make the cut and saves a lot of time. Once the pins are cut, trace the outlines on the front and rear edges of each side and make the cuts as deep as the apron is thick. Glue and clamp the aprons in place. Once dry, drill 3 8 inch holes through each joint and into the sides. Then drive wooden dowels to secure the joints. Cut off any excess with a saw. Alright, cut the last of our dowels off here. Your piece should start to look something like this. Now, in addition to cutting off those dowels, I've also installed a center brace here between the two aprons. We've attached both aprons to the ends. Uh, it, it just adds a little more stability. The next step, obviously, is to put the back on. Now, the back is just like the aprons, except it's bigger and heavier. It's a 2 by 12 the same length, and I've cut dovetails in each end. Now that means the next step is just to put it up here along the back, mark these backs, and then cut those so we can put this into place. All right, we just got a couple of big pieces left to put in the seat that uh, comes in two parts. This rear is the nine and a half inch length that fits between the ends. And then the front actually sits and overhangs just a little bit, about an inch on each end and about an inch and a half, maybe two inches over the front. But it just gives it a nice finished appearance, gives it a little profile. I think that uh, just a couple more things, uh, maybe a routed edge here and along the edges just to knock off some of that sharpness. Plus I'm gonna fasten these two seats from underneath. That way we don't have any visible screws here on the top. So we'll get that done and uh, kind of wrap the whole project up. To really complete the look and feel of your garden bench, use the roundover bit to soften the leading edges of the seat. Once it's complete, give the entire bench a good sanding to get rid of any rough spots or sharp edges. Then grab a book and find a few spare minutes in your busy day to relax and enjoy your own personal retreat.